just by sharing what's really important to us in our actions, not just a few words at the beginning of the session. So we, we put our non-negotiables, we made it very clear that they were in front of technical and tactical. So they, they knew, not just by words, but how we framed it, that actually this is the most important thing. So communication for them became the most important thing in the session. So it wasn't surprising that it was better than it's ever been for that level of consistency, because we brought it alive as opposed to just talk about it now and again in the session. And this is this thing that I've said to you about, let's pick non-negotiables that they buy into, that they say these are the most important, and we put them number one every time in front of every single session. What you'll find is they'll still be number one, but it will just be yes, because they'll start living it and owning it. So comms, comms, yeah, done. It takes a second, and then you talk about the technical and tactical. But they always know it's number one, because they know if that becomes unacceptable. Secondly, we shouldn't just be talking about it now. Actually, we should have nailed it at the rule of three at two and one in the session. We shouldn't have to talk about it now. We should resolve it in training. But also they realize if that's unacceptable, then everything else is going to be unacceptable, it's going to be a bad session. Because that's what drives behavior, that's what drives learning, that's what drives the tech and the tech. So could you see what, how we made that so important to the, to the team and, and kept it alive? Could you see why we made that? And we used an additional tool in there, was just asking them how long they can go for with a reset. So again, another useful tool. Could you see how that worked? Could you see the connection with that? Okay. Yeah, I think they were just a bit of a standard of the market. I think it's a tool that we have yeah, that was that was yeah. That, but what we're doing is we're asking them, yeah. so they take responsibility. Say, so all we said was right. Let's agree what's acceptable and unacceptable within these behaviours, and then we ask them how long can they go for. So they tell us. So I think they came up with three minutes eventually. So we just said, so that's fine. But it drops to unacceptable. We'll shout and we'll let you know ten, nine, eight, and we'll shout what it is. So that's going to give you 10 seconds to <coughs> sort it out. If you don't sort it out, and it's still unacceptable, we're stopped, you get 10 seconds of talk, and the stopwatch starts again. So you go back to zero, and your aim is to make three minutes. What it actually does, it just increases the intensity and the focus of the session. So even the play will be better, because they're realizing they can't just doodle through something. It has to be with intent, otherwise we're resetting again. And that they're owning that, because they're saying the time, they're saying how we manage it. Where we didn't get to within that session, because then it, it, this will take time and us keeping it alive, is then being more dominant at two. So there was times when it was happening at two, but there was also times when they, when we brought them in, they reviewed and said, uh, no, we could have been better there, so we had to change language. Was it acceptable or not? It was unacceptable then. When did you recognize? So some were saying we didn't really recognize it until we've now chatted. And at other times they were saying, oh, we recognize it then. So my question is back to, okay, so why didn't you do something about it then? Because that's what we want. We want you to do something about it then. And the other thing is when they will start asking us, oh, okay, yeah, well, we just need to, we need to be better at our volume or whatever. The question is always, okay, but what's preventing you from doing that? So you'll say that's what you want to do. You say you can achieve it now with what you've got. It doesn't need any extra tactical or technical knowledge or expertise. So what's preventing you from doing it? To challenge them, just giving the, them a conclusion, them giving you a conclusion, is clarifying, okay, well, what's preventing you from being successful at that? To really get them to think, well, actually, nothing, just me, I've got to commit to it. To just pull it back in, they go, okay, that's what it is. We definitely, that time, really, I think it helped you. You're a lot clearer, I think. I, I mean, I've seen you coach a lot more, but you were getting the points across. How did the assist find it when you had that role of just checking when they were coming in, making sure they were doing the nons, making sure they were, the review was effective, checking the behaviours? How did you guys find yeah, that? Yeah, it was good. It just, sometimes it's just hard to... To let them just talk and not you jumping in. Yeah, yeah. Because people are used to that. Yeah. If there's an issue, you just want to it. Yeah. Whereas letting them try work it themselves, then that was the issue that was hard. And the players, because they're used to that, yeah. if you if you went into the huddle, the first thing they do is look at us. Yeah. Saying, Mike, what do we do? Because because yeah. we've developed an environment where <coughs> they yeah. think that's that's Temple, it. Yeah. We're over here. Supposed to. Uh, uh, the people yeah. observing, did you notice anything within the, the level of volume or communication and stuff from normal? Anyone that were watching? Yeah. Oh. Picked up the, the volume was increased, and it was funny for looking at the boys who had not had a wee chat with yourself, and they were running. They, for the end of it, by the way, they were really chatting a lot more at the end of your session, right at the start, but not as quick as it goes. Yeah. Uh, they run a bit. Uh, yeah, that's just being comfortable with the principles yeah. and getting across a bit quicker, that's all. 
For the guys that were applying it, so we'll go for this group first, how did you find the application of the we tools? We thought it was pretty, pretty good, as, as I said, by the end of the session, the update yeah. was pretty good. The, the actual communication, we, we asked them what they thought the communication was, and they were all bit of talk this yeah. and shout and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, communication is different things, so we've got high five, Corey Dennis <coughs> did that, low fives. You know, some of their teammates on the floor going pick them up, that's all communication. And it went from, it kind of stalled a wee bit, very, very quiet, and it went from there, when we spoke to them again, it went from there to way up here, and some of the guys kind of having a laugh and taking the mickey a wee bit, being a bit more unnatural with it. And then, so it went from up there, to be cut by the end of the session, it was more natural, and we saw a lot more high fives uh, uh, from most of the guys, which was pretty good. We stopped them quite a lot, and we asked their opinion. Uh, initially, the two or three guys in each group were doing all the talking, and you know, I specifically picked up a couple of guys that were when the other guy was talking, they were looking away, not paying attention. So we and just, what, what did you think? <laughs> just what he said. But the next next one, he was he was aware because he knew we he was going to get asked questions, yeah. and nobody was going to, no stone yeah. was going to be left unturned, yeah. so we could have been picked on to that. So when the doing the drills, they're thinking about when you're going to stop he's going to ask me a yeah, question. Exactly. I better yeah. keep. Yeah. And that's why that nomination is such an important yeah. impact of the next time they go, I need to know because I might be asked. Yeah. So it yeah. shifts the engagement definitely. Mm. Who else had a go? Anyone another team? Or was it those two? Yes? Mm. Right. I found even be between the coaches as well because uh, Certainly towards the end, we had to split everybody up the groups. We had only had the one court, so there were a lot of kids and a lot of coaches looking after split different ends. So we were kind of discussing with each other, and then some of us were running between each group to make sure we were getting a consistent message yeah. to all the kids and coaches. So we were coaching in a consistent method, and we were uh, supervising the kids in a consistent way as well. And did you manage to keep <coughs> behaviour number one, the non-negotiable, when you were hitting the reviews and stuff? Yeah. To keep that live. Yeah. Okay. Good. So what I'm going to go through now is the framework to help you embed this. So we've only taken a couple of tools and given them a go, we've seen it can have an impact. This framework I'm going to share with you now is going to help put everything together. So again, it's a fundamental, but this is what, again, you'll get a copy of this. This is what I'd ask you to go away and do with your teams. Uh, even if you have to sacrifice a session to, to embed it and explain it and get the agreement, you'll get a return on it massively. The, the last thing I'll say before I go into this is, Never ever underestimate the ability of any single athlete you work with in their ability to do things, to understand things, to problem solve things. Their present behavior now is not a does not dictate their ability or potential. The present environment they're in has influenced their present behavior. Once we shift this behavior, their behavior can shift. So our behavior will influence the environment which will influence their behavior. So let's not underestimate the power of players to work things out, to have solutions, to have a good opinion. We just need to start from scratch and go, right, I'm going to see the potential in all of you, and I'm going to be relentless and patient to do this to help you be the, become the best you can. And if there's players, who's still playing now in this room, by the way? Anyone? So there's a few. Who's played before? Everyone, at some degree? Yes. So let, let's remember, how many times when you were a player, did you, did you know stuff? But actually, coach was still talking. But you actually already knew the answer. And how many times did you go into a session and all of a sudden you're switched off because you're just running whatever play coach wants? And he's not getting you involved and forcing you to think. So we've got to sometimes look back at our own experience and go, yeah, actually, I know I'm taking some of those experiences from how I was coached. But now I can look at it. Some of these things I can do a lot better. And it's not underestimating the potential of any player you're working with. That, that is one of the key elements to it. What? One kind of example of that we had in our group uh, was how we were asking the guys to play defence, and uh, uh, the initial way we were asking them to play defence was, you know, was a high uh, kind of deny, one uh, one pass away, high deny. You know, Craig was looking at our group and he was saying, well, there's other ways to play that. Uh, so what we, we ended up doing just towards the end of the session was we asked the guys to actually make a read on that. So if they're marking a guy that's a, an out-and-out -out scorer, one of their best players, for example, then how would you play defence against that guy? So you would play deny, you wouldn't want him to get the ball. Whereas if you're playing against you know, the point guard or whatever, who's a ball handler, not a scorer, he's a passer, you maybe want to you know, open up a wee bit to prevent the dribble. So towards the end of that session, we asked the guys to specifically make a read on that themselves. Yeah. And then what we did, we, we picked up some of them yeah. after it. Well, how do you think you defended that? 
and why did you send them that way? So they, they were thinking about that rather than us telling them, giving them a specific way to play. So uh, and some great examples, even in the uh, England basketball set up the age group, you know, I've been working about five years with Alan, there was times early on when they were looking to drop certain players because they were looking at who they are now. We kept them because we shifted the behaviour and some of those now have got professional jobs in the States. These were guys that they didn't think were any good because they were judging them based on who they are <coughs> or who they could be. So this, this is something we need to be aware of when we're developing people. So here's the process, if this still works. If not, I'll press the other button. Oh, there we go. So this is almost what we need to do to get the best out of the whole. We're looking at developing a culture now. We're not just looking at an individual session. We need to have the discussion so athletes know what an effective coach is. Because, again, if we change and they still think you should be telling me what to do right now, it's not going to be working. So they need to understand what it is. As I said at the beginning, get them to understand what an effective athlete is, what their role should be. To be a great athlete, what is it? I bet if they pick some of their great role models in the NBA, they'll be coming out with a lot of the qualities we've brought up there. But actually, I'll be living by them. They probably haven't thought about that. So it's this about this relationship between actually, if we want you to be able to make decisions on your own, be confident doing that as a team without me having to call timeouts or stop or tell you what to do, then how do we make that happen? And then we can start agreeing the relationship between each other. And then we can, again, agree the purpose of training. Why do we train? Ask them and challenge them. What's the point of training? Also, we get better in matches. Okay, so what does that really look like? Me giving you the answers all the time, me telling you, just doing loads of drills? Or you really understanding and challenging me and seeing if you can work things out yourself and start upping the pressure to see if you've still got the competency when some pressure increases. This should be good training. And then we can say what it looks like. We can explain then the non-negotiables. So let's agree things that if we did every single time, it would have 